Welcome back to the Pop Revolution Show, the show where we make a new song every month and show you how it was done from beginning to end, writing all the way to production. I'm your host, Nathan Larson, and today we're talking about how to make your drums sound huge. Some are hot in ways that will clear us, so you continue to come nearer. And all this time I still got this fear of seeing what you see clearly. You say I'm not defined, but I will keep my way. You help me to get stronger. If you have not yet seen the music video, make sure to check that out. We'll have a link at the end of this video, and it's also in the description down below. The drums in this tune, to me, really played a huge role in the effectiveness of the song. They have punch and depth that really adds a lot of character to the song. So, what we're going to be doing today is essentially recreating the drums from this tune from scratch right before your eyes. They won't sound exactly the same, but what I'm trying to do is show you the process I go through rather than making them sound exactly the same. But first, here's what the drums sound like isolated in the second verse. As you can hear, there's a lot of depth and punch to the kit. A big part of what I did to accomplish this was through layering sample drums and essentially knitting together my own sound. So here are the tools I used to make this happen. First off, I used Native Instruments Abbey Road Drum Studio Drummer. Next, I used Battery 4, which is Native Instruments Drum Sampler, and I also used Damage by Native Instruments. You may be noticing a trend here. Yes. I use Native Instruments a lot, and that is because I love their drum sounds. Beyond those, I use some really amazing plugins. First, again by Native Instruments, called Transient Master. This cool little toy is what I use to add sustain, attack, and gain to my drums. But you can also use it for more than just drums. I also use Little Radiator by Sound Toys, which is a plugin that can add all sorts of awesome. It's a tube saturator, but in short, it can add anywhere from a tiny bit of grit and warmth to a huge amount of crunch and heat. It's great for adding character and some punchiness. I also use some EQ to add some low end to my kick. So first of all, you don't need to own all of these plugins and sample libraries to do this. I hope to show you more of the process and less of the tools because I know that many of you don't have all of these. So I'll touch on some good options to put in their place when we get there. First off, I'm gonna go ahead and record the basic groove I want with the Studio Drummer Kit I've chosen. The first thing I'll do is make sure that all of my velocities sound really great so it doesn't sound like I played this with my MIDI keyboard, and of course, I'll quantize. Really all this entails is using your ears to very critically listen for any discrepancies that don't sound great and make adjustments. Don't make all of your snares and kicks the same velocity or else it will sound too perfect and it'll sound robotic. So it takes practice to figure out how much you want to tweak. But make sure you do this. It's nitpicky, but super important. Now that I have my groove, I can start adding layers. The first thing I want is to have a much more heavy kick that has more low end and thump to it. So I'm gonna go to Battery 4 and browse for a kick that I really like. As I'm looking, what I'm doing is playing them back to myself and trying to find out what sounds close to what I'm looking for. So I found one that I like a lot and placed it into Battery in the same slot as the kick on Studio Drummer. So now I can literally just copy the MIDI from the groove I made and it will play the same time as my other kick with the same articulation. I'll adjust my volume to make sure it's mixed in well so it isn't overpowering or inaudible. And here is what it sounds like like. To me, this is a huge difference and it adds a lot more punch. However, if you find yourself thinking this is really subtle, a lot of these decisions make seemingly subtle differences, but in the grand scheme of things, they all add up. This one kick being added is the first of many decisions that we're going to be making. From here, I want to add another snare tone that really adds some more pop. Again, I'll browse battery to find one that I like. And as a side note, you don't have to have battery. You can get drum samples and actually drop in the audio itself and adjust the gain. I won't show that here, but it is a viable option. You can also use any other drum sounds, even if they're stock samples in your DAW. No one cares what samples you use if they're helping your sound. So I found a snare sound that I like, and here is what it sounds like on its own. And here's what it sounds like when I mix it in.
Even though I added an additional snare, I would like more splash on the snare. So I'm going to find a more splashy snare to put that in there as well. And here's what that sounds like. Now this is where I'm gonna start going ahead and adding some plugins to start crafting a more unique sound. So I'll create a bus for Little Radiator and send all of my drums through that as a way to create a more unified warmth. If you don't own a tube saturator, you can get Shattered Glass Audio's SGA1566 for free online. I'll leave a link below. But here is what the Little Radiator does to the sound. As you can hear, it adds a lot of punch and it unifies all the different sounds that I'm using. So now I'm gonna add Transient Master to my snares to add more pop and splash. A good option if you don't have this plugin or one like it is to use a compressor to add the splash you want. What you need to do is make sure your release is turned up and have a pretty high ratio. The threshold is really more about at what point the compression begins, so tweak that however much you need to get the effect you're looking for. Here's a comparison of one of my snares with compression compared to the Transient Master. Notice that my compressor has a ratio of 12 and attack and release are both cranked up. Check that out. And here is the transient master. Of course, you can decide how much splash and compression you want, and that can help you decide if you just want to use it on your snares or if you want to use it on the entire kit. But be careful to not process it too much. It's easy to get carried away and actually harm your sound rather than help. Now I'll quickly add a bit of low end to my kick to add a little bit more punch, but I'll only add to my sampled kick since that's where most of the punch is coming from. I'll use Soundtoy's SIEQ equalizer and turn up the low end a touch. What EQ you use is not a huge deal, but it will change the tonal character. I could have used a stock EQ plugin from Logic and it would have worked fine, so don't worry if you don't have expensive EQ plugins. And here is a comparison with EQ and without. Now I want to add something a little more unique that functions like a snare, but has more of a metallic quality to it. And here's what I found using Native Instruments Damage. And this is a sampled hit on a dumpster that sounds like this. Now, once I send it to my saturator bus and throw some sustain on it using Transient Master and also turn down the attack to make it a little less prominent, check out what this does to the sound in the entire mix. I personally think this sounds great. And the final touch is to throw on some reversed elements to accent beat two. So I'll take some snare and kick sounds I'm using and reverse them. To do this, I'll duplicate the tracks and bounce them to audio. And once I have the audio, I can reverse them in the audio editor. Then all I have to do is move it so that the ending hit is right on beat two. A lot of times I end up rolling off some high end with EQ so it doesn't sound exactly like the snare and sounds a bit less prominent. And this is what we wind up with for our final version. And all of that is initially coming from this one groove right here.
So there you have it. That's how I was able to make some really huge sounding drums in layers. Of course, there are many ways of doing this. I didn't get into using live drums so much and what it would look like to EQ and compress live drums from scratch. So I will make sure to put out an episode on that down the road. But you can do everything I did here over top of your live drums to help add more punch and depth as well. As I say often, be as creative as you can and don't just mimic. Come up with your own ways of doing this. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope this sparks ideas for you that you can try out on your own projects. We would absolutely love to hear from you, so be sure to leave any questions or comments you have down below. Also, be sure to subscribe right here so you can keep up with us as we continue helping you become a better artist. You can buy this song, Layers, on iTunes right here. You can watch the music video right here, and you can watch our previous episode right here. All of that and more right here on The Pop Revolution.